Well, good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV this Saturday morning. I am Ashwarya with you. Let us start the Breakfast News with the top headlines. India and Brazil to sign 15 agreements in various fields after Prime Minister Modi's talks with Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro today. Republic Day Chief Guest Bolsonaro to also meet President Ram Nath Kovim. President to address the, the nation on the eve of 71st Republic Day at 7 p.m. Padma Awards to be announced. Tight security in Delhi ahead of Republic Day celebrations. On National Voters Day, Election Commission to celebrate its Foundation Day with a the theme Electoral Literacy for a Stronger Democracy. Kovin to address the function, Vice President Venkaya Naidu calls Aware Voters Foundation of India's Democracy. Committee set up to check pornography content on social media to submit a report to Rajya Sabha Chairman Naidu today. Group with MP Jairam Ramesh as coordinator was formed on 5th of December. And coronavirus a toll a climbs to 41. Infections also reach Europe. 13 cities under lockdown in China. India on alert. 11 people returning from China under observation. The top story this morning. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro will be the chief guest at Republic Day celebrations on Sunday. Bolsonaro, who arrived in New Delhi on Friday on a four-day visit, will meet President Ram Nath Kovind, who will host a bouquet in his honour today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold talks with the President Bolsonaro in New Delhi today. Around 15 agreements will be signed to boost cooperation on a wide range of issues like uh, oil and gas, mining and cyber security after the talks. The two sides are also expected to unveil an action plan setting specific goals for deeper cooperation in a range of key areas. The Brazilian president is accompanied by eight ministers, four members of parliament, senior officials and a large business delegation. This is the first visit of President Bolsonaro to India after he assumed office on 1st of January 2019. But Prime Minister Modi and he have had an occasion to meet on two occasions. One on the sidelines of uh, the G20 meeting at Osaka in June and second at the BRICS summit in uh, Brasilia in November 2019. Now India and Brazil have very warm and friendly relations and as two democracies we have shared approaches, we have shared values. Our bilateral relations were elevated to a level of a strategic partnership in 2006. And as two developing countries, we have similar developmental and global aspirations. This has led to a convergence of mutual interest in many areas. All right, let's get all the updates. Our colleague uh, Akhilesh Suman is now joining us on the phone line. A very good morning, Akhilesh. Uh, so India and Brazil will upgrade uh, their strategic partnership with an action plan and also sign a bilateral investment treaty. What more updates uh, you have because uh, the president uh, of uh, Brazil and uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi will be holding talks today. you know, preferential trade agreement because uh, India and Brazil have a very good relationship and Latin American countries are one of the major destinations. Um, it can emerge as one of the major destinations of uh, India's investment. And you, you know that uh, Indian companies had invested to the tune of up to $6 billion in Brazil. So it, it, this opportunity is also available in other, you know, uh, Latin American countries. So preferential trade agreement might be one of the ways through which uh, India can uh, do it. That is called india Mercosur preferential trade agreement. And this agreement talks are going on for a long time, and there is limited, uh, you know, excess of India in other Latin American countries. 
But other than that, Swarya, what is most important is that uh, a political understanding between the two countries. Because Brazil and India both are, you know, fighting for democratizing the international organizations like UNO, uh, UNO and, um, you know, United Nations Security Council, IMF, World Bank. These are all reflecting the Second World War realities. And in between, many countries have emerged on the uh, world scale. And India and Brazil are also claimant of a respectable position in world bodies. And that is why you know that uh, India, Brazil, South Africa is one grouping that is trying uh, its best to you know democratize those institutions. Also, that uh, you know G4, India and Brazil are working together for democratizing the United Nations Security Council. And there is a BRICS where India and Brazil, along with uh, Russia and China. Uh, and South Africa are also trying to create a multipolar world so that there should be no hegemony of any one country or any other country is trying to create another hegemony. So I think these are the political convergences between India and Brazil, and that is most important. Given the fact that in Brazil is also one of the major destinations of you know oil and gas, uh, it is emerging very well. And other than that, it has very good, uh, you know, technology of agriculture. Mm. Uh, as much as uh, it, is, it has been told to us that ethanol making technology is very good in Brazil. And India is also uh, um, interested in taking the ethanol technology so that uh, we can reduce our carbon foot, footprint uh, in the form of fossil fuel. So I think uh, it's uh, economic relationship is very important it, that is emerging. Uh, political understanding is most important uh, that has to emerge and strengthen more. So I think uh, it's a convergence of understanding between the two countries that we are going to see in this uh, time when the Brazilian president uh, will be the chief guest of Republic Day Parade. He will also meet President Ramnath Kovin, Vice President Benkaya Naidu, and he's also going to address uh, India-Brazil Business Forum on 27th. And after that, he will go to Agra, and then mm. from Agra, he is going back to Brasilia. You know, Eswarya? All right. Uh, thank you so much, Akhilesh, for all those updates there. And uh, after meeting uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and also President Ramnath Govind on 26th of January, Jail Bolsonaro will be the third Brazilian president to attend India's 2020 Republic Day celebrations. Thank you so much, Akhilesh, for all those updates there. And President Ramnath Govind will address the nation today on the eve of 71st Republic Day. The address will be broadcast on the entire national network of All India Radio and telecast all channels of Padur Darshan from 7 p.m. in Hindi, followed by the English version. It will also be telecast live on Rajya Sabha TV. Broadcast of the address in Hindi and English on Doordarshan will be followed by broadcast in regional languages by the regional channels of Doordarshan. All India Radio will broadcast regional language versions from 9.30 p.m. onwards on its regional networks. And facial recognition system and drones are part of the measures taken by the Delhi police ahead of the Republic Day in the national capital. Sharpshooters and snipers will be deployed atop high-rise buildings to keep a watch on the 8-kilometer-long parade route from Rajpath to the Red Fort on 26th of January. Now, hundreds of CCTV cameras have also been installed at par as part of the security arrangements, including at least 150 cameras in the areas covering Red Fort, Chandni Chowk, and around uh, 5,000 to 6,000 Delhi police personnel have also been deployed in New Delhi district, along with the 50 companies of the paramilitary forces. The main zone of Rajpath will be closed till 12 p.m. on Sunday. Now, apart from securing the main venue at Rajpath, the adequate security and traffic arrangements are also being made for the at-home function at Rashtrapati Bhavan. More than 2,000 uh, traffic police personnel have been deployed for a month for the smooth flow of traffic. A traffic advisory has been issued about the police's elaborate arrangement for the route diversions for the Republic Day. No traffic will be allowed on Rajpath from Vijay Chowk to India Gate from 6 p.m. today till the parade gets over on Sunday. Meanwhile, frisking at the, the Delhi metro stations, railway stations, airport and bus terminals have also been tightened. The Delhi Metro Rail Corporation has said that metro services on 26th of uh, January will be partially curtailed. Entry and exit to Central Secretariat and Udyog Bhavan metro stations will remain shut till noon, while uh, the Patel Chowk and Lok Kalyan Marg uh, metro stations will remain closed 
from 8.45 a.m. till noon. On to some other news now, National Voters Day is being celebrated today. The theme for the National Voters Day 2020 is Electoral Literacy for Stronger Democracy. President Ramnath Kovind will be the chief guest at uh, the main function of the 10th National Voters Day that is being organized by the Election Commission in New Delhi. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad will also attend the function. Belief in the ballot too. An anthology of uh, 101 human stories from across the nation about Indian elections developed in collaboration with the publication division will be launched on the occasion. The first copy will be presented uh, to the president. This year marks an important milestone in the history of Indian democracy as the Election Commission of India completes 70 years of its journey. The day is celebrated on 25th of January every year since 2011 to make people aware of uh, their voting rights and uh, make uh, more people contribute to the electoral political process in the country. It is celebrated at over 10 lakh locations across the country to mark the foundation day of the Election Commission of India, which was established on 25th of January, 1950. It's my proud privilege and prayer to congratulate citizens of our country. Currently, the electoral process, as you're all aware, is underway in the end city of Delhi. Concerted efforts to outreach through our systematic voters' education and electoral participation flagship program, also called SWEEP, resulted in enthusiastic participation of 29.24 crore women voters, 61.46 lakh persons with disabilities, and 18.05 lakh service voters. This celebration reminds us of the constitutional rights of adult suffrage granted to every Indian citizen, irrespective of religion, caste, community, language, region, or socioeconomic considerations. And on a National Voters Day today, Vice President M. Venkia Naidu urged all the 18-plus citizens to enroll themselves in the voters list and exercise their franchise during elections. He said, every voter must participate in the electoral process and strengthen the foundations of India's vibrant democracy. In a Twitter message, the Vice President said that voters should elect their representatives on the basis of four C's, namely character, conduct, caliber and capability and not on the basis of adverse set of four C's, namely cash, caste, community and criminal prowess. An ad hoc committee to deal with the challenges of uh, regulating access of children to internet pornography will submit its report to Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkhya Naidu today. The constitution of the ad hoc committee was announced by the Rajya Sabha Chairman in December. Congress leader Jairam Ramesh heads the ad hoc committee. On to some other news, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has asked the youth to follow their duties towards the country to pave the way for a new India. Addressing the youth who will participate in the Republic Day Parade, Prime Minister Modi urged them to ensure that no person and no region is left behind. Prime Minister Modi interacted with over 1,700 NCC cadets, NSS volunteers, tableau artists at his uh, residence ahead of the Republic Day Parade. And referring to their efforts of uh, training for the Republic Day Parade, Prime Minister Modi said that the entire world witnesses the power of India through their performance on Rajpath. बीते सत्तर साल से हमने एक रिपब्लिक के रूप में पूरे विश्व के सामने एक उत्तम उदाहरण रखा है। ऐसे में हमें देश के संविधान एक ऐसे पहलू पर ध्यान देने की जरूरत है, जिसकी चर्चा बीते सात दशक में उतने विस्तार से नहीं हो पाई। हमें नागरिक के रूप में अपने कर्तव्यों को प्राथमिकता देना, प्रमुखता देना और 
हर बात को अपने कर्तव्य के तराजू से ही तोलते रहना चाहिए अगर अपने कर्तव्यों को हम ठीक से निभा पाएंगे तो हमें अपने अधिकार के लिए लड़ने की कभी भी जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी यहां जितने भी युवा साथी आए हैं मेरा आपसे आग्रह रहेगा कि राष्ट्र के प्रति अपने कर्तव्यों की ज्यादा से ज्यादा चर्चा करें चर्चा ही नहीं बल्कि खुद अमल करके उदाहरण पेश करें हमारे ऐसे ही प्रयास न्यू इंडिया का निर्माण करेंगे एंड डिफाइनिंग यूनिटी इन डायवर्सिटी प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सेट दैट डिस्पाइट सेवरल लैंग्वेजेस ट्रेडिशंस cars and creeds india is one like a bouquet of flowers artists also presented some performances at the event vishwas ban chuke aap maniye pradhan mantri ji ek bharat shreshth bharat ki soch ko saakar karte hain jab hum ek bharat shreshth bharat ki baat karte hain to hame ye bhi yaad rakhna hai कि आखिरकार आइए भारत है क्या असल में भारत है क्या भारत की अपनी पहचान क्या है भारत क्या सिर्फ सरहदों के भीतर 130 करोड़ लोगों का घर मात्र ही है क्या आपका मन भी कहेगा जी नहीं भारत एक राष्ट्र के साथ साथ एक जीवन परंपरा है एक विचार है एक संस्कार है एक विस्तार है भारत का मतलब वसुधैव कुटुम कम भारत का मतलब सर्व पंत संभाव भारत का मतलब सत्यमेव जयते भारत का मतलब अहिंसा परमो धर्म भारत का मतलब एकम सत विप्राह बहुधा वदंती सत्य यानी सत्य तो एक ही है इसको देखने का नजरिया अलग अलग है एंड नाउ लेट्स गेट यू ऑल द एक्शन ऑन द अपकमिंग दिल्ली असेंबली पोल्स Senior BJP leader and Home Minister Amit Shah will hold a volunteer meet in Delhi today, and later in the day, Amit Shah will hold public meetings in Durga Chowk and Bhawana. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will hold a road show at Karol Bagh and will address a public meeting in Greater Kailash in Delhi today. and continuing with our election coverage our focus today is on the chandni chowk assembly seat with an electoral or electorate of over 125000 chandni chowk is delhi's the smallest but one of the most prominent and prestigious seats which is witnessing a three way contest with the candidates from the congress bjp and up in the fray this time Delhi's historical Chandni Chowk, the prominent market in Old Delhi, dates to the founding of the then capital city of Shah Jahanabad when Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan established the Red Fort on the banks of the Yamuna in the 17th century. Part of Old Delhi, the Chandni Chowk constituency is mostly dominated by businesses and is considered an important seat by all political parties. The battle for the seat will be between three parties the Congress BJP and AAP but the contest has taken an interesting turn following the defection of MLAs In 2015 the Aam Aadmi Party fielded Alka Lamba a former Congress leader who had joined the AAP then she backed the seat for AAP but was disqualified in 2019 after she rejoined the Congress Lamba is now seeking re-election on a Congress ticket 
The Aam Aadmi Party has meanwhile fielded former veteran Congress leader Prahlad Singh Sahni, who joined the party last year. Sahni is four-time Congress MLA from this seat, retaining it from 1998 to 2015. तो कोई पार्किंग है ना कोई ग्राउंड है ना कुछ है तो वहाँ एक बहुत बड़ी जगह खाली पड़ी है जिसको वाटर सप्लाई की जगह है उसको हम लोग चाहते हैं केजरीवाल साहब उसमें कर दें सबसे पहला प्लान हमारा ये होगा कि हम उसके लोगों को वो करें और मलीवाड़ा चांदनी चौक के अंदर जितनी लटकी हुई तारें हैं इनको ठीक करें पानी की समस्या कहीं है तो ठीक है मेरे हिसाब से तो पानी की समस्या हमने काफ़ी ठीक कर दी थी द थर्ड मेन कंटेंडर फॉर द प्रस्टिजियस सीट इज बीजेपी सुमन कुमार गुप्ता एक ही निवेदन है कि इस चांदनी चौक क्षेत्र का विकास किया जाए जो एक ये ऐतिहासिक विश्व धरोहर का क्षेत्र है लाल किला जिसके अंदर हो जिसके अंदर विधानसभा हो जिसके अंदर नगर निगम के हेडक्वार्टर हो यहाँ पर विकास के नाम पर अगर देखें गलियों में टूटी फूटी सड़कें सीवर की समस्या पानी की समस्या ट्रैफिक जाम की समस्या समस्याओं से घिरा हुआ ये चांदनी चौक है हम चाहते हैं कि इसका विकास करें As elections approach, locals in the area are relying on the candidates to find permanent solutions to issues like traffic jams, parking, and a pending redevelopment plan. We want to say that our business is being reduced. Its sales are being reduced. It will take about half a year. There is no other problem. This is the problem of the road. The problem is that the water is coming out of the sewer. And we are पैसे दे दे के भी दुखी हो गए कितने पैसे हम अपने पास से खर्च करें जल बोर्ड वाले आते हैं देखते हैं चले जाते हैं अभी पहले इन्होंने गांधी ग्राउंड की पार्किंग तोड़ी उसके बाद ये चांदी चौक का काम शुरू कर दिया ये उसके बाद फिर अब अब ये क्या इन्होंने एक और पार्किंग बंद कर दी यहाँ तो गाड़ी लगाने की भी जगह नहीं है चांदनी चौक इलेक्टेड आई द कांग्रेस और द बीजेपी सिंस इट फॉर्मेशन इन नाइनटीन बट द पिक्चर चेंज इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन विद ऑफ द आम आदमी पार्टी While the Congress ruled the constituency between 1998 and 2015, the BJP was in power between 1993 and 1998. With inputs from Lena Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. News from Jammu and Kashmir now. 2G mobile internet services on postpaid as well as the prepaid phones have been restored in the Kashmir Valley. However, it can be used uh, to access uh, 301 websites that are approved by the Jammu and Kashmir administration only. These sites include search engines and those associated with banking, education, news, travel utilities and employment. The move comes so within a week of uh, the administration ordering restoration of prepaid mobile services in the valley and the resumption of 2G mobile data service on which some whitelisted websites across the Jammu division. Describing corruption as a major hurdle in India's growth and development, Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has called for a total war on corruption, delivering the Sardar Patel lecture. on governance in new delhi on friday naidu expressed concern over the deteriorating moral and social values in the society he also stressed on the need for initiating a movement of ethics at all levels of governance in the country yeah, as the degeneration of moral and social values in the society led to a general decline in the functioning of our public services at every level is a question we must ask everyone must ask this question i feel that it is imperative that a movement of ethics is initiated at all levels in governance of the country corruption is a major anchor in and has to be relentlessly fought at every level now it's a global phenomena also it is said that the corruption skews growth and development affects the economy deepens poverty and increases inequalities it sustains informal power structures and remembering vallabhbhai patel for his contributing uh, contribution in unifying the nation into one single entity the vice president said that sardar patel had a clear vision for an efficient administrative system asserting that people must be at the center of the governance system he asked the bureaucracy to be more proactive and ensure that there was no gap in the intent execution and the delivery of various services to the people With a clear vision for an efficient administrative system, 
He wanted the civil servants to maintain the highest standards of probity and efficiency and strive to uplift the conditions of the poor without fear or favor. The bureaucracy, the civil service have a greater responsibility in seating it that whatever legislations are passed by the parliament or the assembly, decisions taken by the cabinet or the ministers and ministries are implemented and the benefits that are announced reach the dedicated or the desired people. That is the main part of the governance. And Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha Harivansh also addressed the event. He praised the IC Centre for Governance for improving administrative work. कि गवर्नेंस को लगातार इफेक्टिव बनाने के अलावा इस देश को मजबूत बनाने का कोई दूसरा रास्ता नहीं है मैं पाता था मैं पत्रकार के रूप में देखता था और छोटी जगहों पर जाता था जिन ब्लॉक्स में जाता था पहले कुछ एक लाख रुपए उनके विकास के लिए आते थे अब कई सौ करोड़ आते हैं जो वहां लास्ट मैन है जो विकास का दायित्व जिसके ऊपर वो जानता नहीं कैसे इन चीजों को हम खर्च कर पाए उसके पास सपोर्ट सिस्टम नहीं है इन चीजों पर लगातार वर्षों से प्रभात कुमार जी आ, आ, का यह सेंटर वो प्रेसिडेंट है इसी सेंटर फॉर गवर्नेंस की काम करता रहा है एंड नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एनवायरमेंट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज A new research conducted in the Himalayan region suggests that plant life is expanding in the area around Mount Everest and across the Himalayan region. Researchers say that these plants are growing at heights where earlier mostly small plants and grasses used to grow. The scientists used sat satellite data from 1993 to 2018 to measure the extent of vegetation between the tree and snow line. The researchers found a weekly positive increase in the extent of uh, the vegetation since 1993 with the strongest trends emerging between 5000 and 5500 meters above sea level now this change in the himalayan ecosystem is linked to warming temperatures and climate change the result of the research has been published in the global change biology journal Let's get to some international news now. A powerful earthquake has killed at least 18 people and injured hundreds of people in eastern Turkey as rescue teams searched through the rubble of the collapsed buildings for survivors early morning. At least 30 people were missing following the magnitude 6.8 earthquake. And at this moment, ad hoc committee to deal with the challenges of regulating access to children uh, to internet pornography is submitting its report to Rajya Sabha Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu. Let's cut across live. Right, uh, so those are the live visuals from Parliament, uh, ad hoc committee to deal with the challenges of regulating the access of children to internet pornography has submitted its report to Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkia Naidu. The constitution of this ad hoc committee was announced by the Rajya Sabha Chairman in December and Congress leader Jairam Ramesh is uh, heading this ad hoc committee and you can see those visuals there as he submitted its report 
to the Rajya Sabha chairman just a while back. It is an ad hoc committee on a very, very important subject and that is regulating the access of children to internet pornography and its impact on children, the impact of social media as well on the children. Chairman M. Venkia Naidu had flagged this issue and he had asked for the constitution of this ad hoc committee. And he had then announced in December last year the constitution of this committee headed by Congress leader Jairam Ramesh. So, ad hoc committee was formed to study various issues related to the online pornographic content. This uh, committee was formed in December last year and it was asked to study about uh, issues related to pornographic content on internet and also social media platforms. The, summit, uh, the committee was uh, asked to submit its report within a month. The group with the Congress MP Jairam Ramesh as the coordinator was formed by Rajya Sabha chairman on 5th of December last year. And on 5th of December 2019, Chairman Naidu had announced in the House the constitution of this informal group. And uh, this group uh, has held several meetings. This group had 14 MPs from 10 parties and it was studying issues related to pornographic content on internet and social media platforms and its effect on the children of the country. To go through it. Really, it's a very in-depth study you people have made and also came out with the Constructive suggestions. I'm very happy about it. This is a new experiment we have made forming an ad hoc committee and a larger issue to see what are the limitations we have and then what is the depth and implications of the problem, effects, then after effects. That was there in my mind. I saw members uh, raising the issue and expressing concern on a couple of occasions. So that's how this idea of ad hoc committee came and then you members, you said, sir, please give us some little facilities. That way these facilities have been given. I will uh, go, I've gone through it at a glance, but I have to go through it in detail, discuss with other officials and also discuss with the, the minister's concern informally. And then we have to move on on this. I personally feel that, that this should be discussed in the house also, so that you get larger, wider support. I agree with uh, what Jairam Ramesh has said about uh, uh, bringing it to the notice of the Prime Minister, Prime Minister using one of the occasions, whatever he chooses to highlight this, so that <coughs> it has a national level as well as international level implications. Not simple, because this is a problem plaguing the entire community, humanity across the globe. So we try to do it. I once again compliment you and other members of the committee for their contribution and also for timely submission of the report. You know, why I was uh, firm on that deadline is, otherwise it will become a habit and then like any other committee, sir, they ask for extension and then things, you get number of issues from time to time. And then things get postponed and then people will lose interest. That's the purpose of uh, fixing the deadline. I'm happy that you people have adhered it to. It shows that if the members desire 
then it can be done. That, yeah, there is a way. Hmm? Thank you once again. I, I wish the deputy chairman also will go through the report and then also get back to me on certain ideas. Sir, I'll leave it to you. All right, uh, Chairman Naidu there reacting after the ad hoc committee to deal with the challenges of regulating access of children to internet pornography submitted its uh, report to Rajya Sabha Chairman Venkia Naidu today. Chairman Naidu had uh, suggested the formation of this committee after AIA DMK Vijaya Satyanath had uh, raised this issue in the House. And the constitution I would like to of share this uh, with the speaker also in the country. And the constitution of this ad hoc committee was announced by the Rajya Sabha chairman in December, with the Congress leader Jairam Ramesh heading this ad hoc committee. And with that, uh, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.